When Demetrius Johnson would fight, he would do things that we had never seen before. Not in practice, not in video games, not on cartoons. We had simply never seen it. There's an argument that Mighty Mouse is the greatest expression of martial arts in the history of combat sports. I would make that argument. Demetrius Johnson is probably right now the best ever. Look, I just be focused on bringing packs in. They're like, what's on his hip? They know he packed in. Look, run up, tell him, run up, boy, I wish they would. Run up, tell him, run up, boy, I wish they would. In every sport that ever exists, we hear people talk about what their Mount Rushmore is, regarding to the greatest, the most impactful people in the sport. When we talk about MMA, there's a guy that always appears on everyone's list. Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson recently announced his retirement from mixed martial arts in an emotional press conference at one championship. The 125 pound GOAT with arguably the greatest skill set we've ever seen, it's tough to see such a fighter stop fighting. Here in this video, I'll go through the timeline of Mighty Mouse and show you guys how he became one of the greatest fighters of all time. Demetrius Johnson was born in Kentucky, but was raised in Washington where his combat sports career would begin. He was a standout wrestler in high school, placing third and second in the state in his junior and senior years. From there, he would receive scholarship offers from a lot of good wrestling programs, but chose to stay close to home and go to Pierce Community College. However, he didn't wrestle in college, choosing to work to fund his education and take some time away from the mats. After two years at community college, Mighty Mouse would start training in mixed martial arts, being inspired by training footage of Rashad Evans. As he began to train MMA, a training partner noticed his raw talent based on his wrestling background and recommended Johnson to start training seriously, which he did. Within three months of training, Mighty Mouse had started his amateur career, winning his first fight by knockout. He would finish his amateur career with a record of 9-0 and his continued dominance in the pros. Johnson would have three fights in Alaska, then get signed to the WEC, one of the biggest fight organizations at the time. We all know Mighty Mouse for his time at 125 pounds, but flyweight wasn't a division for the men's at this point, so he was fighting these guys at 135 for his first couple years in MMA. He lost his first fight in the WEC against Brad Pickett, being unable to defend his takedown. But Joe Rogan said something very interesting during the fight. I gotta tell you what, Mike, they've been, there's been a lot of talk about opening up a 125 pound division, and if they do, I believe that Demetrius Johnson can make that weight. And if he does, he is gonna be a handful there. After Johnson's first professional MMA loss, he would fight two more times in the WEC before they would get bought out by the UFC, merging all the WEC and UFC fighters together. Demetrius Johnson was now a UFC fighter and he would get impressive wins in his first two matches. He would then face the soon-to-be Bantamweight GOAT and fellow WEC fighter in Dominic Cruz in his first title fight. Mighty Mouse got dominated, losing the fight by unanimous decision, and showing that there are weight classes for a reason. Right after the fight, the UFC finally listened to Joe Rogan and opened the men's flyweight division at 125 pounds. The champion was decided by a four-man flyweight tournament that saw Demetrius Johnson and Joseph Benavidez face off against each other in the final. The fight was very close, but in the end, Johnson pulled away with a split decision win to get the inaugural men's flyweight championship. This would finally start the flyweight greatness of Mighty Mouse. After this win, Demetrius Johnson strolled through the division. He had his first title defense against John Dodson, but they each got fight of the night honors. Then in Johnson's second title defense, he submits John Moraga by armbar in the 5th round. Now when we thought we had a great fighter, Johnson turned it up a notch. In a rematch against Joseph Benavidez, Mighty Mouse knocks him out in emphatic fashion in the 1st round, being the first guy to finish Benavidez. Then he faces a juiced up Ali Bagautinov and wins by unanimous decision. He submits Chris Carrasso, then submits Kyoji Horiguchi, beats John Donson in a rematch, and knocks out gold medalist and arguably the greatest combat athlete of all time in Henry Cejudo on his way to his 8th title defense. Demetrius Johnson is dominating all of these guys at flyweight, but some controversy begins to spark between him and the UFC. Do you, do you think there'd be, uh, be higher, bigger interest with Demetrius with such a, you know, a great champion? Yeah, you would think so. You would think so. But it never happened. 
they never pulled ratings, they never pulled pay-per-views, it just, it, it wasn't, you know, wasn't what it should have been in my opinion. The UFC started this division in hopes of bringing new eyes to the sport of MMA. But with Johnson dominating everybody in that weight class, the UFC had a hard time promoting the division. Not only that, there was nothing going on in that division. There were no rivalries, there were no upcoming prospects, the champion of the division wasn't very exciting, although he was finishing almost all of his opponents. The flyweight division was Demetrius Johnson, then a whole bunch of nothing. Still, Mighty Mouse Johnson continued his king reign on the division, beating Tim Elliott by decision and submitting Wilson Hayes to tie Anderson Silva's record of most UFC title defenses with 10 of them. But even with such an achievement from Johnson, the UFC had the nerve to put this fight on a UFC fight night a free fight card for people with ESPN+, Plus, just so Johnson couldn't earn pay-per-view points. The UFC was doing terrible by their most talented fighter on the roster, and everybody knew this, including Mighty Mouse. Johnson was on his way to break Anderson Silva's record with 11 straight title defenses against Ray Borg. And what does the UFC do to reward him? They put an interim lightweight title fight as the main event over his record-breaking performance. And by God was it a great performance. Johnson throws Borg into the air, grabs his arm, and locks the win with a suplex into an armbar. Till this day, it's the greatest submission to ever happen in a real MMA fight, and it was done by one of the greatest to ever do it. But unfortunately for Mighty Mouse, this is where it starts to get really dark for him in the UFC. I think that a fight between him and TJ Dillashaw would be something that people would actually be interested in. I'm not thrilled with Demetrius Johnson. You, you, you're, you're the pound for pound best in the world. TJ Dillashaw challenges you, one of the best in the world, former world champion, and you flat out deny the fight. The UFC has given up on trying to find the next great flyweight and went in a different direction. TJ Dillashaw had just won the bantamweight title and was looking to move down in weight to become double champ. But the last time Johnson fought a 135 pound champion, he got dominated. So Johnson had one stipulation. You know, Sean Shelby, he called me. He says, hey, I want you to fight Tito Dosha. And I was like, okay, pay me a million dollars. We'll make it happen. You go fight yeah. TJ? yeah, we'll make it happen. The UFC weren't having it, saying Johnson wasn't worth it and didn't bring that kind of money in. The fight never happened, but Dillashaw's path to double champ still lingered in the air. Demetrius was booked the rematch against the Olympic gold medalist Henry Zahuda, But instead of a first round knockout like the first time they fought, this fight became really competitive. Being the first time in a while, we've seen someone put a fight up against Mighty Mouse. Cejudo dominated the control and ground game, while Johnson dominated the striking. In the end, due to constantly seeing the king reign supreme for so long, the judges gave the fight to Henry Cejudo, finally closing the door on Demetrius Johnson as the UFC flyweight champ. Most champions with a reign that long would get an immediate rematch, but that's not what Mighty Mouse wanted. Instead. Johnson asked his manager right after the fight, can I get out of my contract? To which they said yes. Johnson gets traded to one championship, an MMA organization stationed in Singapore, in exchange for Ben Askren, an 18-0 wrestler at the time. That was the last UFC fans heard of Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. But although he wasn't fighting at the top stage, he was dominating opponents. His first three fights in one championship were easy dominating his way to the title against Adriano Marias. But with the new move to this organization, came with some new rules that Johnson was not familiar with, like kneeing grounded opponents. In the UFC, it's illegal, but in one championship, it's allowed. So Marias throws a knee that catches Johnson on the ground and gives Mighty Mouse his first loss outside of the UFC. At age 36, it looked like Johnson's dominance had finally worn off and is on the downturn of his career. He would be booked a rematch against Marias, but every GOAT learns from his mistakes. Demetrius Johnson catches Marias with a right hand, making the younger fighter wobbly, and then hits him with the same flying knee that he got knocked out with in the last fight, proving his dominance to flyweights all over the world. They would have a trilogy, and once again, Mighty Mouse shows no matter what, no matter who, no matter where, no matter when, and no matter how, there's no one on this planet that can beat Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson in this division. 
That's what made his retirement so bittersweet. Knowing that if he continued, there would be more unfortunate fighters that would have to taste the wrath of the Mighty Mouse. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.